Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we are going to do interconnects in CMOS technology. So this module will cover wire resistance and capacitance, RC delay and wire engineering. So as an introduction, the chips usually are made of wires called interconnect and in a stick diagram the wires are fixed or have a set size and transistors uh, are usually little things that are placed under the wires there are many la layers of wires some CMOS uh, technologies have 10 to 14 levels of wires wires are as important as transistors and they affect the speed power and noise of the chip alternating la layers of wires uh, run orthogonally So let's look at the wire geometry. The wire geometry, you can see here, these are examples of the wires. So there are two blocks over here. So the wire dimensions are defined by their aspect ratio, also known as T over W. So for the old processes, the aspect ratio is less than 1. And for the modern processes, AR is approximately 2 that means the thickness is double the width so here you can see if T equals to W the cross section of the wire is short and fat however if T equals to 2 W the the cross section of the wire is very skinny and tall. Okay, so here it means that um, modern processors they try to pack in as much as many skinny wires as possible look at an example of a CMOS technology. This is an example of an AMI 0.6 micrometer process and it has three metal layers. So modern processors can use 6 to 10 metal layers and in Intel 180 nanometer process the metal one which is the metal layer closest to the transistor so let's see if you have a transistor over here this is the NMOS and you have the gate okay and on top you can have this is the wire so this is metal one and then you can have metal two the three and so forth so the layers of metal are stacked on top of the other so the first metal layer is very thin, metal 1 is thin and um, the metal 2 and further up they become thicker. Okay. So the topmost layer is the thickest and usually this can be used for VDD and ground. The thin metal 1 layers are used to connect to the transistors. So let's look at the thickness of each layer here. As you can see here the metal 1 here is thin. 480 nanometer and as you go up the thickness increases and the sixth layer has thickness of 1720 nanometer so because it is thick and to obey the aspect ratio so it also wide so this is metal one very small and thin and the um, top layer metal are very big and fat and wide wire resistance so the wire can be defined by its resistance and the formula for resistance is resistivity times the length divided by the thickness and the width of the wire. So the longer the wire, R is proportional to L. So the longer the wire, the higher the resistor and the thinner the wire. The number of electrons that are traveling is less 
Because of this, the resistance becomes higher. This is inversely proportional. There is something known as the sheet resistance. Sheet resistance is actually O or resistivity over T. This is known as sheet resistance or ohms per square. So this is a dimensionless unit. And if you have um, the sheet resistance, you can just multiply it by the number of squares here. So you can divide the long metal wire into different squares here. So for example, here there are four blocks. The, the amount of resistance, uh, you just need to multiply the number of squares with the resistivity. So the choice of metals, until 100, um, the advancement of the 180 nanometer technology, most wires were made using aluminium. So there can be other choices of material for the wires. So the modern processors usually use copper. And however, this copper has a drawback because the copper atoms diffuse into silicon and can damage the transistor. So the, these uh, copper wires have to be surrounded by a diffusion barrier. And you can see here each metal layer have different resistivity and silver has the lowest resistivity of all of the other layers. Okay, so this is another example of the sheet resistance or the ohms per square for different metal layers. So you can see here it, there is the sheet resistance for diffusion, polysilicon, metal 1 until metal 6. So you can see here metals have very low sheet resistance, less than 0 0.1 ohm per square. And Polysilicon and diffusion have very high sheet resistance so we cannot run wires using these two layers because they have very high so Let's resistance. look at how the wires look like in the layout So this is the example of the layout of two different layers of wires So for example the blue and the is purple is metal one. Two. So if you remember in if you look at the cross section of these layers, so the blue is metal one underneath and metal two is on top and you have something known as the vias, right? So the vias are drawn here and they create holes and connection between the two metal layers, right? So these are vias. It is better to have many little vias so that the current can go through each one. So the same current can go through little points here compared to having only one contact. So if you see here, if we have another version and you have only one via right here, this is very fragile and if it's broken, you don't have any connection between metal 1 and metal 2. So it is better to put many contacts. So just in case one is broken, you have all the alternatives of the current flowing through the, the metal 2 to metal 1. So just like the transistors, the wires have capacitance. So the wire capacitance is given per unit length and see here capacitance the formula for capacitance is equal to C epsilon A over the spacing here and this is known as H right so if you have a different metal layer so let's say this is metal 1 metal 2 metal 3 so Capacitance is present between two metal layers. So, and this is a dielectric. In between is a dielectric. And you can see here if there are many adjacent metal layers, you can have capacitance on the top, at the bottom, the adjacent capacitance. So there are four different capacitance 
um, which are to its neighbors. Um, that means to the layers above and also to the layers below. So the total capacitance for one single wire is actually a summation of the top capacitance with the bottom capacitance and the two adjacent capacitance. The capacitance in wires are similar to capacitance in parallel plates which have the formula of C epsilon A over D or the thickness. So C equals to epsilon A over D. So C is proportional to A and C is inversely proportional to D. So if you increase A, you they increase the area, the capacitor increases and if you increase uh, the distance between two parallel plates, the capacitance decreases. Okay, the dielectric constant is actually the dielectric between the two metal layers and this is the dielectric which is 3.9 for silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide is normally put between the two metal layers in CMOS to isolate between the two metal layers. So it's usually silicon oxide. Current technologies are starting to use lower K dielectric. So if you can see, capacitance is proportional to epsilon or the permittivity. So if the permittivity or the low K dielectric, they have epsilon which are low. So then the capacitance value is also low. So ideally we want a low capacitor, be low capacitance because the delay tau is related to the resistance and the capacitance. So we want low, low C so that we can reduce the delay.